I've had stories of uh, students, you know, whose professors had just totally given up on them. And sometimes I'd be places, and the, the, the professors would joke about them sometimes. But I'd know the inner, I'd know the inner person of that student. I know what they were made of, and they rose above what everybody else thought, and they went on and, and graduated. My name is Simeon Fields, and I'm an academic advisor in the Academic Support Center. And I've uh, been at this position now uh, going on almost eight years. I think we have a very uh, diverse uh, student body. We have a lot of students who are working very hard, you know, to try to better themselves. But then we also have some who, um, who have issues in the classroom. You know, they, they're not really prepared when they come here to be a student. You know, so uh, they have uh, um, challenging first few semesters and get themselves on academic probation and end up seeing, you know, seeing me. You know, a person comes in and they start telling me, you know, the reason they have D's and F's and all of this and giving me all kind of excuses and that kind of stuff. And I can say, well, stop the story because I know why you got an F or a D. You didn't go to class. You're not doing your homework. You're not taking notes. You know, I've been there. So let's just stop the story and see what we can start doing to make a change. One of my favorite students, is, you know, her name was Hodgers, you know, graduated a number of years ago, you know, and she was one of the first students I had here at the university. And when she first started coming to see me, you know, she would come in, like I said, Thursdays at 4.30. And people just don't come in the last day of the week for the last 30 minutes if they're not concerned about themselves. So I knew she was concerned about herself. And so she would keep coming and keep coming. And so she got her A, she got, excuse me, got her, 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 her C minuses and, you know, barely passed classes and those sorts of things and so that went on for the first semester and then she goes on probation too and um, one day I got I think, an email or phone call from one of her teachers saying you know have you seen Hodger and um, you know I, you know and I said well no I haven't and he said well she has not come to class and so I, I think I called her per, you know I, I called her or emailed her and said you need to come see me right now and, and you know so we came in the, the room here and and started saying you know I know you can at least get to class what are you doing to yourself why are you doing this why are you letting all these people down who believe in you and you can't even get yourself to class you know so we had a talk and you know and tears were flowing a little bit and that kind of stuff so then the change started happening because she started passing those tests and getting better grades so that's the metric she got off the, uh, her probation you know, got back in good standing and then of course I, you know after getting to know her and, and spending so much time with her I kept checking on how she was doing so pretty soon it was she was getting more more C pluses and B's pretty soon pretty next semester more B's and B pluses pretty soon the A started coming up so you know it, it is continual rise and you know there was a point in her where once again she had to say you know I've had enough I know I'm better than this I would say as a student, uh, not committed as a student, um, I would say also a student that faced, faced very, uh, uh, a number of challenges you know, in his career. And so I think a lot of students, a lot of uh, people who uh, also as a student, people gave up uh, hope on. So you know, for me, education was a mixed, a mixed bag of, of, of emotions and feelings and those sorts of things. Dyslexia um, was, I think, one of my one of a huge struggle. I wouldn't say it defines who I am, but it was a huge struggle because at that time, going in the 70s in elementary school, you know, they didn't have the um, the uh, technology we have today, and so I was kind of one of the guinea pigs, I guess you would say, you know, with people dealing with this, that uh, dyslexia in schools, you know, and those sorts of things. And so they really didn't know how to handle me or any other classmates, like in junior high school. It's just kind of was an overall label of anybody who had learning disabilities. LD meant learning disability. And at that time, of course, you had to figure it out. <laughs> you know, it didn't say learning disability on there, but once again, you figured it out, and you were pretty much labeled. And of course, you know, when you got your report card because at that time they gave you a piece of paper, you know, after the end of every term, you know, and people would say, let me see your report card, let me see your report card, and yours had LD on there. And they say, what is that about? What is that about? And of course, you didn't want to show anybody because you know what it meant, that you were different. Yeah, it meant you were different. You had different teachers because most of the teachers who taught special education classes were not the, you know, the ones who were involved in things. Nobody knew who they were and that kind of thing. And so they would say, you know, who is this person? Who is that person? Or, you know, and so you were able, you were, you were judged, of course, differently. And um, that, that plays on you because at that age, I think in junior high school and around then, you want to be considered, you know, as the same as everybody else, you know, but I didn't have that option.
One of the things they did also was they, they put uh, most of the people who had uh, learning challenges in the same classroom, it was called a self-contained classroom. And so they put us all together and we have the same classes most of the whole day with the same people where other students change classes, change people and those sorts of things. So you didn't get to, uh, you know, learn how to interact, you know, and, and, uh, and how to socialize with your peer group that much. You know, and so people also, they, they saw you. I remember being, being teased and, you know, people pointed at, you know, and those sorts of things. Because kids, of course, they can be cruel. And then, you know, things changed once I got bigger. <laughs> and so, so that put a, into a lot of things. But, yes, that, that was there. I think, yeah, I think most anybody in that situation would feel they're a failure, you know, because you see your classmates and they're uh, succeeding and, and learning and, and facing not too many problems and, you know, enjoying growing up and that kind of stuff. And, and that one part of you in your life you don't really have because, you know, you, you, you experience so much failure in the classroom of uh, taking tests or not being able to learn as fast as everybody else. And so, you know, you start getting more depressed and you start thinking, why is it, why is it me? This is very unfair, you know, and you have those kind of feelings. You know, I always think of the story of when my parents went to a um, uh, open house meeting at the junior high school I was going to. And the, the, well, the, one of the teachers said, well, you know, the, probably the best he'll ever do is to be a cook. And, you know, back in the 70s, that was not a good thing. Nowadays, we case cable TV and all that kind of stuff. But back then, that was like a pretty low class job. You know, I was in, in, in college and it was someplace I really didn't want to be in the educational system. So I've always experienced so much failure in that and that kind of thing. And, and I think that was a, a life turning event when I told my parents, you know, I want to come home and go to work. Now, you have told the story numerous times is when, you know, I was working at this factory and I met an older gentleman and uh, he happened to be the grandfather of the young woman I took to the senior prom and so you know I was talking to him and he'd been at this job in this factory for like 20 years and you know and so he, this was a terrible place to work but he didn't have no other no other options because he needed to make money and at that time I'd say you know I needed to make some changes or this is going to be me and so you know at that time I said well I'd have to talk to my parents and and say well, you know I'll give school one more shot and you know at that time I said well if I go back, I need to go back with a different attitude, you know, and, and a, a kind of an adjustment in myself. And I was able to, you know, realize and see things that I could do better. Number one, go to class, take notes, the basic stuff of being a student that, you know, I hadn't done before, you know, sitting in front of the class, all these things, you know, and, and show the, the professors that I was invested in learning. You can not be the top of your class and still be successful, you know, knock up if I am successful. You still can be successful in your career, but you can't sit back and say, oh me, oh my, I wish it was different because it's not going to be different. It's just that you have to rise up and, and, and make a change.